On June 21st, the solstice splits the world in two. While the southern hemisphere has their darkest and coldest day in the middle of winter, the north experiences their longest day of sunshine of the year. The summer solstice has been an important day for many cultures throughout history, as a day of celebration, festival, and honouring tradition. The modern western world has come to view the summer solstice to represent hope, a time when the coldest days are behind us and the now is full of brightness and cheer. In 2021, the United Kingdom initially chose June 21st to be their Freedom Day, the day by which they were hoping to ease some of the COVID restrictions and social distancing laws. June 21st also happens to be the day that Jeff Rosenstock got married, and is the title of a song off his 2016 album, Worry, one of my favourite albums of all time. Worry is a record that takes you by the hand and empowers you to confront the miserable hellscape of a world that we call home. Throughout Worry, Rosenstock uses the seasons and weather as a temperature gauge for the current political climate. From the very first line of the album, the world is portrayed as cold and dangerous. As the album's introductory song, We Begged to Explode foreshadows the world's descent into coldness over the past decade, as we have all seemingly forgotten what it was like before everything exploded. The only mention of warmth in the album's first half comes from Wave Goodnight to Me, a halcyon song which sees Jeff reminiscing about the carefree good old days. However, this nostalgia is short-lived, as he reflects in hindsight how he should have taken the warning signs seriously and been ready for the inevitable downfall. As a punk musician reaching his mid-thirties at the time, Rosenstock now feels wearied by the world and powerless within its grasp. He expresses this in the song Staring Out the Window at Your Old Apartment. He goes on to relate our current situation to being homeless on a cold winter's night. This song introduces another major theme found on Worry, urban gentrification. Jeff observes a friend's old apartment being spruced up with tacky renovations such as novelty surfboards in order for the landlords to profit off a housing boom. However, he recognises that these so-called improvements are merely superficial, doubting that anything is actually being done to fix the structural problems that lie beneath. This light makes it nearly impossible to see if they fixed all the cracks in the wall. Rosenstock views the city as a place which is ruled by the wealthy elite and where the poor are rendered powerless. On Festival Song, he talks about the role that advertising and marketing play in this. He notes that the city skyline is spotted by billboards which co-opt the aesthetics of street-level socio-political movements in order to appeal to young, impressionable progressives. He goes on in the song to lament the lack of agency that the working class holds within capitalist society. Here, Rosenstock turns his attention to the massive online social media platforms which dominate our modern lives. Apps such as Twitter and Facebook have been important tools for connecting like-minded individuals and organising political movements, for better or worse. However, these multi-billion dollar corporations have managed to monetize our communities through advertising and mining our personal information. Though it's easy to feel powerless against the overreaching hand of corporate greed, Jeff points out that there is a certain power which we do wield in this situation. Hey, 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 hey. 
Rosenstock returns our agency to us by arguing that our personal identity is a valuable resource, which the big tech corporations are willing to invest millions of dollars to take from us. He explores this deeper in the song To Be A Ghost, where he talks about how our role in capitalist society is to have our identities consumed for corporate profit. Born as a data mine for targeted marketing. But again, Jeff encourages us to value our own identity, as it is the one thing we truly own and our last possession that gives us power within capitalism. He asks us to be active, present, and cognizant. They want you to be a ghost when they rob you of your hope. But you've got power when they're not expecting anything. To hold on to our last remaining ounce of agency in the world. As the song bursts into a crescendo of righteous anger, Jeff returns to talking about the weather saying the best way to escape late-stage capitalism is to set the entire thing on fire. The myriad of issues we face in the modern world on a day-to-day basis all come together on the song Blast Damage Days. From the disintegration of our concentration from social media and the misinformation those platforms enable, to income inequality and the militarization of the police force, Rosenstock speaks of the toll that these everyday atrocities have on our mental well being, as we get caught in the blast zones of all these daily micro explosions. It's here that Rosenstock introduces another major theme of worry, the defiant act of love. At the end of each verse on Blast Damage Days, Jeff restates the commitment he has to the people he loves. Love is the salve that cures us from the weariness of the world. The one weapon we have to fight against it and the one shield that protects us from it. We must always hold on to those who we love. From this point on, we enter the album's centerpiece. Borrowing its structure from Abbey Road, Worry ends with a medley of short punchy songs, crossing various punk subgenres, and each further addressing the issues raised within the album's first half. Bang on the Door is a minute-long straight-up punk song, that speaks of the paranoia that comes from life as a renter, having to answer to landlords and living in fear of being kicked out of your home. Rainbow captures Rosenstock's love for ska punk in 90 seconds, singing of being slowly forced out of the inner city as he tries to escape the rising tide of gentrification. The album hits its most furious on Planet Luxury, a guns blazing 29 second assault of hardcore punk against the powers that be. Hellhole furthers the discussion of the poor living conditions of renters and the cycle of poverty that the rental industry perpetuates, and applying it to the world as a whole. After all, we are just borrowing this earth for a short moment in time. Then we get to the album's turning point. June 21st, the summer solstice. 
The album's temperature makes a sharp rise, as Jeff paints a picture of a couple frolicking arm in arm, taking on the world together. Rosenstock treats the solstice as a day of hope, as the cold winter of turmoil is finally over and the summer is here. From June 21st onwards, the album enters its final run of songs and becomes much more optimistic in tone, as Jeff begins to focus less on problems and more on action. The fuzz draws on imagery of police brutality, but brings back the idea of holding on to love in dark times. He carefully draws a parallel between police using chokehold maneuvers and embracing a loved one highlighting the irony that officers seem incapable of controlling their own strength and end up killing the very ones they are meant to protect. While You're Alive completes the end of the sentence which To Be A Ghost began a song about how the world encourages you to not be fully present within it, so that you can't question it. While You're Alive is the first part of Worry's final call to action, encouraging you to break free of apathy, reclaim your agency, and take action before it's too late. Jeff compares this with telling a loved one how you feel before they die, and not taking for granted their presence in your life. With the song's final lines, Rosenstock outlines what love looks like in the modern age. Gone are the dreams of grand Hollywood romances. Love is about looking out for one another, and helping each other just get through the bleak world which we inhabit. This in turn reveals why Jeff has such a fire of righteous anger burning within him. It's because he cares about the world, and worries about it. It is okay to worry about the state of the world we are currently in, but there's just so much to worry about that it's completely overwhelming. Worry's final track, Perfect Sound Whatever, is not a nihilistic lament of what's the point. In fact, it's the opposite. It's an encouragement that we must do whatever we can and not worry about whether it's perfect or not, because it can't be. The chorus of this song has become a bit of a mantra in my life and work, to remind myself not to worry about making something that is perfect, because while perfect is good, done is better. Perfection is the enemy of good, as it demoralizes us when that perfection is ultimately unattainable. While we work towards making a perfect world, we cannot be disheartened that it is seemingly an impossible feat. We must do our good work regardless, because we will be making the world a better place because of it. In my eyes, Worry deserves to be considered among the all-time great pop-punk albums. Just as Abbey Road was the Beatles' swan song, the final album they wrote and arguably one of their greatest, Worry is perhaps the last great pop-punk album, at least of this first wave. It is a maturation of the genre, created by a veteran of the industry who thinks we all just have a little bit too much to worry about. <laughs>